This doesn't uh, go uh, nationwide. Nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it should. It won't. You never know. I, it, I it don't could. know very much about the Bernitsky, so you're going to have to ask Well, we're just, I was hoping just to kind of, let's see if I can, I had, I had a list here, and now where did it go? Ha ha. Here we you go. Found it. I did. No. Come on. My phone is very slow. Hello. Hello, oh, there. <laughs> to the camera. <laughs> Our future generations, Grandma, are going to be watching this. <laughs> who's, who's over there? I'm saying you're crazier than I am. Come on, that's bad. You know, that's okay, though. I know. Oh. <laughs> you got to laugh. You have to laugh. I know. I, oh, after losing somebody, it's crappy. It's, it's, I know. Bad. So, every, okay. everybody's been around. Okay. Yes. I won't cry. So, okay. I'll ask the questions. Um, yeah. First off, I wanted to get your name. My name is Grace Johnson Bernitsky Hill. <laughs> I love Some names, names there, Grandma. Would you repeat that, please? <laughs> okay. Grace Johnson Bernitsky Hill. You won the prize. Yes, I got it. Okay. And I'm her grandson, Jamie Bernitsky. <laughs> All right. So... Number one question, and we'll kind of go, we'll pick some of these questions out. Do you have a holiday tradition, and what's your favorite thing to do about the holiday, around the holidays? If I had any, it seems like it sure changed this year. It used to be that I had Christmas here, and in my home, even prior, uh, when my three kids were growing up, my mother had Thanksgiving and I had Christmas. And that way their kids could stay home and open their presents at home. Okay. And I made the turkey or whatever we ate that day. Okay. Um, I remember when I was a kid, we did always come, I believe it was Christmas Eve, to your house. It could have we, been. I remember going to Christmas Eve at your house. Um, and I, some of the most memorable times is uh, when you had your foreign exchange students living there. Yes. Because sometimes it was their first Christmas they had ever experienced mm -hmm. in the way that we celebrate it. Sure. And it was really kind of fun to see their reaction, even mm -hmm. though sometimes I didn't understand everything they said. <laughs> but I remember those. Those are memories that I, yeah. I thought were really cool. I um, think so, too. And you know, they made tamales prior uh, to Christmas, and their tamales were different than the Mexican tamales. They wrapped theirs in banana leaves. I remember that. And or if they didn't have the banana leaves, they put them in foil, which were it still tasted the same. Yeah, it was good. I remember, and it was just different. I had never, I have they never had seen more it fruit in theirs, and they didn't use. Their masa was a little different. It was a little it was less grainy yeah. than what we're used to around here. And they don't use as much hot spices. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also thinking, sorry, back to Christmas because it's like, it's Christmas time right now. I remember the one year that you let me go bananas at your house. Bananas? Yes, I went totally bananas. Mm. I must have been maybe 12 or 13 at the time. Mm. You lived on Lingo still. Mm -hmm. And I brought just gobs of lights. And I remember I stapled the whole side of your house with lights. I made a Christmas tree. I made a house all on the side. And you just let me go to town putting all these lights on your house. And you would come out every once in a while and check on me. And you'd be, I know in your mind you're probably thinking, oh, dear God, my electric bill. <laughs> I probably didn't think about it. <laughs> but I remember you letting me just go crazy. And you're like, okay, go for it. <laughs> There are worse things than having lights on your house. But I remember that was a lot of fun. I do remember, too, your dad getting on my roof and Jennifer uh, picking uh, avocados. Yes. And what, always somebody on my roof. Well, because you had the best avocados. That tree had to be 30 years old, and uh -oh. it made the best avocados, and you could just climb up on the roof and get them. I remember I, I could go up, and I still don't like avocados. <laughs> Is that right? I don't like those things. My wife loves them. Mm -hmm. But because you have that tree, I know when they're ripe. I know just when they're oh, ripe. Yeah. And so she always marvels, 
that I can pick the best avocados for when I go to the store. And I'm like, well, I had a lot of experience. <laughs> Grandma right. taught me. Well, I don't know. Well, we suffered. Well, you knew Grandpa Hill, too. Yes, I did know Grandpa Hill, and he Thank loved gardening. And he oh, had, he had yeah. so many different fruit trees out there. I remember he had the persimmon trees. He had a lemon tree. He had an orange tree. Maybe a couple orange trees. Great, yeah, and grapefruit. Oh yes, the and grapefruit. Pecan. With the pecans up front. And the almonds, and a fig that oh. I must not have watered very good because it fell over. It fell over. And I said, "Why did you do this?" <laughs> it make it makes me feel bad. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's okay. Hey, it was always fun. They over don't there. have a deep rootage. And if you don't get that water in there, you've got your tree gone. Okay. Um, okay. I like this question. Do you have a nickname that your siblings or your friends call you? I can't Not think of really, any. just Gracie. And See, I don't even remember people calling you Gracie. Yes, I know the so. little ones call you Triple G, Great Grandma Grace. Yeah, and, my, uh, and then Jennifer's kids have always called me Alma. Oh, because yes. they couldn't say grandma. Alma, yes. See, I, I always, you were so, always Grandma Grace to me. Mm -hmm. So that has stuck. But it's always been Grandma Grace to you. And so uh, with uh, um, the Oregon kids. Okay. Except the great grandkids, I think, sometimes call me Triple G. Okay. All right. Uh, where were you born? North Home, Minnesota. What was that house? like as a child or what yeah what was that house like as a child it was a two-story it wasn't a fancy by any means two-story um upstairs we had a bathroom but all it was was just the toilet oh no really? shower no mm -hmm. bathtub so we just had to wash in a tub i mean like a like an actual tub. rain tub okay or um just spit bath. You know what that means, don't you? I don't think I've heard that before. Okay, it's just washing with a washcloth. <laughs> oh, so it's called a spit bath. I didn't. That's I what didn't my know. my mama called it. That her name was Lydia. Lydia. Oh wow! Wow! wow I learned something new today. Yeah, and well, she now always I'm... put me to garden and. Grandma. What else to tell you about it? Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. So how did you and your family spend time together when you were young? Well, mostly it was, uh, well, meal time. Uh, my mom always worked. She was a teacher. She was a person that worked at the post office. Uh, Dad worked as a mechanic, trying to get us all together. And, you know, my sister was older than me, about six years. And later on, of course, she always had a job. You know, it was only mealtime, basic, basically. And oh, so wow. We didn't, can you imagine, my dad was a mechanic, but we didn't have a car. Wow. We didn't really need one because there were 300 people and we could walk everywhere. Oh, wow, that's a small town. It was only 300 people? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know... My dad, your son, is a mechanic, and our cars always had something wrong with them. <laughs> He's the mechanic, and there was always something wrong with his mm, cars. They say that that's the way it goes. <laughs> it was like, so Dad, was... this needs to be fixed. I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Dad, there's no air conditioning. Well, I'll get to it. The car runs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, you're the mechanic. Oh, good times. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what was your favorite subject or teacher when you were in school? Oh, boy. Favorite subject. Uh, if I had to guess, I would guess history because you love talking about history. You love that kind of stuff. You I, love talking I, about it. Okay. Well, probably not uh, U.S. or... Um, I don't know anything about California that much because I, I went to school up to ninth grade uh, in Minnesota. Well, you know, history's pretty neat. I really like geography. Oh, okay. Um, I like maps. I like looking up where places are. Uh, 
and that kind of thing. And I know you like to travel. I still remember how much fun you had when you went, I believe it was Sweden? Yes, I went to Sweden. I remember when you came back. You brought all kinds of stuff. And you mm -hmm. you must have talked about that trip for, goodness, a long, yeah, a long time. But it was just so, it was neat and fascinating to me, you know. You were young, right. You know. But we had a trip together. We did. We did have a trip together. You poor child. <laughs> it's one that you got back. <laughs> well, that question isn't on here, but we'll talk about what is um, one of the most memorable trips? What was the name of that place? Leggett. We went we, to Leggett. We were going to Leggett, and I think we stopped in Big Sur, too. Or, but we we were headed nor uh, into North California, Northern California. And we were going to go across a bridge. A bridge. I forget which river it was, because I, I don't remember how old I was. What was I, like, seven or eight? I was young. Okay, let me think. Uh, if How much younger is John Garza than you? About five See, years? I think five years because he was born in 1988. I was born in 83. I think he may have been about five or six. He was little. And you... So maybe six, I was ten? Six. No, six plus five. Yeah, well, yeah, ten or eleven. I was young. I remember that. I So I was pretty young, but yeah. I, I was old enough that in, you didn't have to take care of me. I could take care of myself. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was super young. Okay. But we were crossing this bridge, and it was a kind that opens up to let the ships through. Yes, and I think it twisted, right? It twisted. It didn't go. It wasn't a drawbridge that went up. I think the whole thing twisted. I do not remember that part. I just remember, I was like, Grandma, there's a red light. And you're just like, what red light? And, <laughs> and it, it was it, flashing. And this, and this voice came out, out of nowhere. Ma'am, you need to stop. <laughs> yeah, we could have gone into the drink. <laughs> and I think he stopped the bridge yeah. and we made it across. We did. And I think I remember after we got across, you stopped for a minute and you were just like, are you okay? And I was fine. I was like, well, I'm okay. We only talk about it and laugh and we're so glad we're here. But that would have been quite the treat to um, go off the bridge in that little Subaru because that's when you had the blue Subaru oh yes and you got to shift it yes used to always let me shift that little car we could talk about that too <laughs> you put it in neutral one put the you two girls in the back seat and the car's rolling away and they're screaming and you're running after the car oh Lord. oh geez. how did we not hit anything how did I put up with you <laughs> I think, and I was pretty little at the time, I think. Well, you were up. This is what John Falcon signs asked me. How old was he when he was shifting the car? And I think, I said, at least nine. I think you I was it. fascinated by the shifting. And I knew that when you came back, you were going to have to put the car in neutral to start it because it won't start if it's in gear. So I was like, well, I'll just put it in neutral for her so she's ready to go. Not realizing you didn't have the parking brake. Oh, yeah. I went in just for a little while at a service station. Right. I remember it was at the gas station. And there were two girls in the back seat. <laughs> they're just... screaming their heads off in the car. Well, yeah. The car was moving <laughs> without the driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We have a little... Oh, goodness. Who's going to look at this? Who is watching Who, I, You know, I don't know yet. We'll oh, see. Wow. I'm thinking, uh, part of me is I'm thinking I might start a family vlog channel. Mm. Um, just because I think it's kind of cool to talk about these things for future generations and kind of the things that we've experienced. I'm starting to realize I'm a little bit older when I talk to some of my coworkers and some of the things they d have never experienced or even heard of. And I'm realizing that some of these kids grew up, they don't even know what a CD is, much less a record player or an A-track. You know, those kind of things. <clears throat> And so I think it's, I, my thought is to kind of put some of this stuff out there that just for future generations to reference, I think it's kind of neat. So, right. oh, <clears throat> let's see, <clears throat> we've digressed <laughs> off of our questions, but we're, that's all right, but we're having fun. We are. And that's the most Can important thing. No. Let's see. Um, I know this is a good one. I think this is really right. What is the most important lesson that your parents taught you? <laughs> and it's hard because I know parents teach us a lot of things, but something that really sticks out that you always remember your mom or your dad instilling in you. 
I don't know why this just came to me and it isn't very important but when I started babysitting my mother said remember you are the one in charge you are the boss when you take care of these kids that's what you do you have to expect them to listen to you and I don't know why she told all that except that's maybe the teacher in her there yeah. but hey that's something that we remember. Yeah. Okay. She might have told me that about parenting. <laughs> I'm sure. There's always good advice about parenting. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a fun question. Did you have a favorite toy as a child? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know who brought it home, but it was actually kind of... Um, what, what is it? When, when you have a toy that seems like it's... Okay, ahead of the time, you know. Um, okay, a little forward thinking or um, okay. futuristic maybe? It was, yeah, maybe. Uh, it was called a hoot nanny. And it was one of these things, oh shoot, I, had, I just had one out here. You put your pencil in it and you had a little windy thing okay. and it would make designs. Really? I could show you. I have a Oh, I think I have, have a small uh, one here. I remember I think we you showed me that when I was a kid. I mean, I remember always doing crafts when I was a kid mm -hmm. at your house. You always had these cool little gadgets to do crafts. Mm -hmm. Now I, I've heard that term before. And another thing that you learned how to do was make houses out of great big boxes. Yes. My goodness, people must have thought we were you, you, destitute. You, we needed because <laughs> here we are st sticking this big refrigerator box on top of that poor little car, <laughs> and then we put them in the front yard. <laughs> and I, I think I even painted those things. I know you. I remember you giving me like paint, and I painted we them. We let you paint the house. <laughs> We were not very particular. No, actually, uh, you had an apron on, and uh, most remember we painted that house blue. It's still blue over there on the. I angle. do remember painting. Actually, it has painting the never house. been changed. Well, we must have did a good job. Well, actually, I tell you what, we got. You had a big spool, you know those kind that have the big old wires around it, the yeah. PG and E or whoever, and you were out there and you were painting the spool. <laughs> Well, we painted the house. I remember telling your mother, and she said, you let him paint? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? It didn't hurt you any. It didn't eat it. I know you were old enough not to do that. I don't remember eating anything weird. I was pretty <laughs> particular. Oh man, we did we did a lot of crazy stuff at your house. We oh, yeah. I remember always looking forward going to your house because it would always be some sort of craft we were gonna do. Mm. We were gonna make something, build something. You mm. always had something up your sleeve. Um, mm. I still one of the most memorable things is we made play doh. I don't know how many times, and I know it must have drove my mom nuts because here I'd come back with this smelly play doh because we'd always put I'd be like oh put vanilla in it, put this, and you're like okay. Well, now it's slime, and I have to tell you the truth. I don't really I like don't them like it making either. it. So my mother-in-law bought the kids a slime kit, and that stuff stains, and it's so messy, yeah. and I it's stuck to my table still. Oh, did it? I think I had to sand it off, and they, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Luckily, the kids have forgotten about it. Yeah. The, and I just, it, it disappeared. The one kid that really is crazy, but of course, she probably doesn't do it now because Maya's a freshman. Maya uh, Stewart, um, you know, that's uh, Faith's daughter. She has every kind and every color in a container, you know, and she just loves that stuff. Wow. And uh, there's all kinds, you know. Right, there's so many. I know I was overwhelmed and I'm like, thank you, Francis, for giving this to them. They're going to make such a mess and who's mm -hmm. going to have to clean it? <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, the carpets can get ruined. Oh, so I don't even. Better to have a, and have we have a dog in the house right now, so it's oh, you just. Do? Oh yeah, but I, she's outside because she's driving me nuts. Okay. So I won't let her bother you. Okay, I know we're getting off track, and okay, that's all right. Let's, but that's okay. Um, I'm trying to think. <clears throat> well, you had two. Uh, here's a question. Uh, where was your wedding? 
Um, I had two of them. Yeah, right, you had two weddings. So let's just go with the first wedding. First one. <laughs> the first one, because that's my grandpa. So That's right, Alan Bernitsky. I didn't have a big wedding. Partly why. I'm not for that much. Uh, and uh, the other thing was Alan's family, I don't know if it was because they were so poor or they just didn't value going to weddings. There wasn't, there weren't any Bernitskis there. Um, we were uh, at uh, this first Lutheran church in Dinuba. Okay. And uh, the only people that were there were my folks, my sister from Minnesota, uh, Alan and I. Was that it? But then we had a reception at my mother's house on L Street in okay. Dinuba. Okay. And so that was the big part of, you know, getting married and having a reception. No, oh, excuse me. I had a little... And we, uh, we had... I think we had that black and white car. It was a Ford. I think there's two, I think. Yeah, I think there's some pictures of it. Because mm -hmm. I remember I had you sit down and we went through um, Grandpa's photo album and I, there was a picture of him mm. putting a deer or something in the trunk of that thing. I think it was a deer. No, Maybe I think what? so. I, I, I don't, I'll have to look at the picture again. Okay. But he's doing something in the trunk. The trunk is open and I thought... Mm. Yeah, I'll have to look at the picture again. Okay. I'll have to pull that out. Oh, okay. goodness. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, have you ha oops, have you had a job, which, yes. What was your first job? A telephone operator at 13. <clears throat> telephone operator. Now, I think we should, exp now I know what you had to do, but I think, like, my kids will never understand what course, you had to do yeah. to how okay. that worked. When... We were telephone operators in my time in, at days. Uh, well, I'll have to tell you that it was it was kind of an odd place to have a telephone um, office. It was in a caboose or a uh, car. Uh, a okay, now we're recording again. Okay, so we're gonna we ran out of batteries. So now we're gonna talk about the switchboard real quick again. Okay. I don't know why, but I got hired at 13. Uh, that probably was a freshman year, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I guess it didn't take a whole lot of skills to run this thing. Oh. You know, I mean, just putting a plug in. Okay, I went back to how it works. I'm sitting at a switchboard with, there's a, they call it a jack and a plug. We have the plugs in front of us, and the switchboard has these holes, and behind each hole is where the people that are going to use a telephone, when they pick it up, this little flap goes down and goes like that, and I know that maybe my mother, if this is her number, I will go like this, operator, and she'll say, I want three, five, whatever. Uh, number okay, and then I'll take the plug in front of it and I'll go put it in three five and then there's a ringer it Goes ring and then oh, and my mother's friend is talking. Okay. You don't listen. Remember? You don't yeah, do that. and uh, So that's kind of what I did all day long Okay, when I worked and, um, That sounds fascinating because you probably talked to several different people over the it's the only awesome. time that I actually kind of didn't do a real good job was at night. They brought in a, a roll-away bed behind the switchboard. <laughs> <laughs> and every time somebody you wanted the fo uh, to use a phone, it rang. It would wake me up, right? Okay. okay. So here I am in the night, uh-oh, by morning. I noticed that some of the flops were down and the ringer wasn't on. Meaning these people did not get me. But I, well, I don't remember getting in trouble for that. But it wouldn't be how many people in that town would ever want anything at night. Well, apparently there was some that didn't. And we didn't even have a hospital. 
I wouldn't even worry <laughs> what they call. Oh, goodness. Um, now, um, if I remember right, you also did switchboard operating here, too, yeah, in after California. Eight, yes, and after, eight, after 18. But that's the beauty. Okay, we are now live. So let me get to my question. So <clears throat> this is where we left off last time. And that's when the camera kept messing up. Yeah, well, let's, and, you want to review it a little? Yeah, so we were talking about your first job as a switchboard operator. Yes. So um, if you want to explain a little bit about your that job and what it entailed. Well, a uh, switchboard operator is uh, one that uh, takes in the calls from people from their homes. But in the day when I started, they couldn't dial because there wasn't a dial. Okay. You, you had to completely uh, depend on the uh, switchboard operator. Okay. And so when you lifted up your phone, she would come on the line and she'd say, um, operator, and you would say, 35W or or 385 and she would plug you in to that that number hole there's okay. a hole that you put your plug in and then you ring it and okay. that's how it was from the beginning of time <laughs> <laughs> but okay i think that's pretty cool because you don't do that now you know we just dial a number and i don't even know if I don't even have a actual house phone anymore. I don't know if you've seen this on Facebook. These boys were, are asked to dial on a phone. <laughs> yes, I Your see dad that. put it on, I think. And they said... Because it was a rotary dial. Yeah. You know, <laughs> drrr, yeah. Yeah. Drrr, and they couldn't do it. <laughs> I thought that... I, I laughed and I laughed and I'm like, gosh, I was trying to remember the last time I actually used... I mean, this is even pretty old. Yeah. But not that... Yeah, it's got. I fun. did have a rotary. I wish I'd kept it. Yeah, I wonder if they even if you plug it in, if it'll still work. Well, we could have to. Where would you find one? An antique uh, store? Oh, I, I actually have have one. You do. <gasps> oh, please keep it. It's in a drawer somewhere. It's it's looks just like your typical phone. Just, oh yeah. It's kind of beige and it's got the. And rotary. you know the kids love to play. But get it out. The kids love playing. At least. They learn their numbers. Well, of course, you already do, but yeah, it's still fun. Yeah, it is. I have to I have to find that. You have to dig that out. Okay. okay. Let's see. Next question. Okay. And okay, let's go here. I like this question. What did you want to be when you grew up? Probably just the usual thing that women did want was a husband and children and I wasn't much beyond that because I didn't really care to go to college I wasn't a real great student so I didn't have that desire to go to COS or Reedley College so I just kept working as a switchboard operator and I married and had children Okay, well that's good. And if I hadn't, you wouldn't be here. This is true. <laughs> but I, I know you did more schooling because you became a preschool teacher. Yes, that was after 40. But there's there's no <clears throat> age limit. After the fourth child. That's okay. And my husband at that time, uh, Donald Hill, wanted me to go to college. He, I, he thought that I could probably excel in something <laughs> oh, right. other than switchboard operator. <laughs> <clears throat> so I went, but I took one class at a time. Well, you were working and raising well, a yeah, child. Well, yeah, mostly home. Yeah. And then, and then uh, Jennifer didn't like some babysitters, and uh, so I had to start night school, and then she didn't mind being with her sisters and her dad. And uh, I did uh, get an AS in child development. And it was kind of a joke. After having four kids and two stepkids, 
I get an AS degree in child development. But hey, but you did it. But that, you know, Grandma, hey. I, I think learned it, a lot. I really I think, did. You know, I think it's important for people to know that <clears throat> there's no age limit or there's no like, oh, you have to go to school at this age. You can go mm -hmm. at any age. And I right. think that's your proof of that. And I think that's pretty awesome. You know, um, I know I'm going to go off topic here, but my supervisor was in her 50s when she got her bachelor's degree. She decided to go ahead That's and, great. you know, and did it. And she was, she almost did it because at that point she didn't really need it, but she was so close and she's like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just buckle down and, and do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So I think a lot of times we have this set, like we have to do it at a certain time, but there's no certain time or there's no specified time when we can go well, to school. I know or... with myself, I found that I tried harder. And I persevered because I think I've got to do this to get this. Right. You know? I think that, and then when you're younger, sometimes it's a little bit harder to push because there's. Yeah, and you're looking at the boys or the girls are looking, you know, it's, but I was past that, you know. Right. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, that's okay. You know, uh, so um, yeah, yeah. I did. I buckled up. Uh, sometimes I did a tutor and. Or I'd study at the school and you know, you know you do what you can. Yeah. Alright, this question I I like. <clears throat> what was your first car? Uh I didn't have my car until um after a divorce. I got that little green and black maverick. Oh, uh, I've heard Remember a lot of it? stories about I've never seen it, <clears throat> but I do Wait, and maybe Dad has a picture of it. Maybe. You know, I don't have a picture. Maybe he... I, I just I remember hearing about it, and I know he made it loud, and you were a little annoyed about that. Well, what he did... I was working in Visalia at the telephone company, and uh, he put pipes on. And I come into Visalia, and I was 38 years old, something like that. And here I come into Visalia and it goes, bup, 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 bup. And I'm, I'm looking around, left to the right to see if are there any cops around. And then you get a ticket at 38 for bikes. You go, Grandma. Yeah, they, maybe they would have thought I was a teenager. I was kind of young looking. <laughs> anyway, that's that was really my first car that I bought. Okay. Well, I think that's kind of cool. Uh, we'll have to ask Dad if he has a picture. I, for I wish some... he did. But that There's had to be... one in Reedley that's just mm -hmm. like it, but it's yellow. And I went up to him and I said, I haven't seen one of these cars for years. I had a green and black one. I just had, can't picture you driving a bright green car with straw. No, it's a... What was it, bright green, or was it no. like a... What, what is that over there with that... Like, no, that color, uh-uh. Oh, okay. It's more of a... It's, it's not that pretty. Like an avocado-ish <clears throat> green? Or, sort of. Uh -oh. well, why does that have to happen? Well, we can pause the recording. Well, let me see who it is. Lived, and tell me about your first house. The first house that I lived in <clears throat> as a, an adult. I think that would be... Appropriate. Well, we could start. I, where I, where I have lived in the past, mm -hmm. since birth. <laughs> uh, North Home, Minnesota, was my birth home. It's uh, seventy-five miles from the Canadian border. It's not the warmest place in the world, and uh, but it's fun. And then my mother didn't want to live there anymore because there was no uh, advantage of living in this little town. Okay. And so, Dad didn't want to come along at that present time. And we moved to Oregon, Roseburg, Oregon, uh, and we lived with uh, his cousin, George Anderson, and his family. We were there for a year, but not living with them the whole time. We, Mother and I did live in a boarding house. Okay, so then we um, got an invitation to come to Dinuba, California. 
In June. Oh, goodness. In June, it was nice and toasty. And I thought, I, can, can that be on here? Yeah. I thought I was in hell. <laughs> I did not think there was any place in... <laughs> well, it kind of is in summertime. It's 110 degrees. I have degrees. never been in such a place in my life. <laughs> it's worse than cold. Oh, but gosh. Anyway. At least when you're cold, you can bundle up. But when it's that hot, it's just hot. And then, you know, you get a, I don't think, well, if the, tr we were on the uh, Greyhound all the way down, you know, to uh, Fresno. And then to get into a car, there was no such thing as AC. Oh, gosh. So there you go. I'm sweating. But uh, the uh, McLean family is uh, who invited us down. And they're originally from North Old Minnesota. And everybody knew each other in that area. But anyway, we came down here. We lived in a little cottage behind their house. And um, they had five kids. And one was about my age. Her name is Elizabeth. We always called her Tiny. And um, Mom and I lived there until my dad decided to come out. My mother and I went back to North Home, Minnesota. And then my dad had this ugly Studebaker, but it ran and it got out here. And um, we found a place in um, Dinuba to live. And um, I've lived in Reedley, I've lived in Colinga, and then I've come back to Dinuba, and I'm still here now. Yeah. Now, quick question, how old were you when you, you and your mom moved out to Oregon <clears throat> from Minnesota? I think it was almost 15. Oh, okay. I was going to be a sophomore. Okay. And now, did your sister come with you, or did she stay? She uh, was married to Al oh, at okay. age 17, almost 18, so she was already out of the house. Oh, okay. All right. See, that's something I, I don't think I knew. I mean, I think I knew she stayed in Minnesota, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, she stayed. Okay. <clears throat> but she lived in Minneapolis. Ooh. That's the largest city. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Tell me about your first house that you had as an adult <clears throat> of your own. Of my own. Yeah. It's this one. <laughs> oh, that's well, true. I did... But I mean, as an adult, when you were, I mean, I know you were married. Oh, so as you, oh. as you guys were married. Oh, it was a two bedroom on Meadow Lane in uh, Dinuba. Okay. And I think you took me by there once and showed me. I have showed you it. So... Okay. And then we moved down the street to a three-bedroom fireplace, nice place, and lived there for a while. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm choking here. All right, next question. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Let's see. Where have you traveled, and what was your favorite, favorite city to visit? Well... <clears throat> After my second husband uh, died, uh, his name is Don Hill, he had two daughters that I raised, or he and I raised for about seven years, and she lived in Amsterdam, and her name is Cynthia. She calls herself Cy. We took a trip from Amsterdam, okay, Jennifer was along too. We went on up into Sweden, and I would say the city that we um, hung around uh, for a while was Stockholm. Okay. And I would say I really liked that city. It was beautiful. It had about nine bridges. And we stayed in a, a boat, a ship. Oh, It okay. was... <clears throat> what we were doing, um, we were going along, uh, staying at hostels. Hostels are kind of an inexpensive way. Well, you were in one up at Leggett. That was a hostel okay. where you uh, share the place with other people. people. Okay. I didn't know that's what it was called, <clears throat> so I'm learning yeah. something. Yeah, okay. okay. That was kind of fun. You kind of all work together, and you yeah. take care of the place. And 
Uh, you just stay usually, we, normally if you're traveling, you just stay one night. And we did just stay one night in that uh, ship. And then we walked all over Stockholm. We didn't drive. We had the car at a certain place, but it's just easier get out of the car and just go see the sights and yeah. uh, walk it. And it was I, fun. I think it's easy in a city, especially a bigger city, it is easier to walk around <clears throat> because you're not trying to find parking. And then you're not, you you can look at the sights without being distracted about trying to watch where you're driving and watch <clears throat> other people. So I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's fun. When an Irene and I went to New York, that was one of the best things we did was walk around because you can mm -hmm. see so many of the sights <clears throat> and not have True. to, you can just take your time. You're not pressed for time. Okay. I'm going to turn the heat up a, a speck. Okay. Good. We are. We and we're sticking to our questions. And, and I can even think. <laughs> of course you can think, Grandma. <laughs> well, it's getting worse. Oh. Yeah, I, I forget names of things and people. Sometimes I do too. And I'll say, Are you are you John or Joe? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, you've met a, but think about it this way. You've met a lot of people in your lifetime. So it's hard oh. to remember. You know who the person is. Just sometimes I'm like, sometimes I forget. Someone's like, oh, I remember you from work. And I'm all, I haven't seen you in 10 years, but uh, okay, I remember you, I guess. <laughs> so, so it's hey, okay. It's awful, but hey. I just say help me with your name. I, I should know it. Well, mm. you know what? That's okay. Yeah. So, uh, next question. Do you practice a religion and what impact has this religion had on your life? I've, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't remember not having uh, a church and uh, learning about um, Jesus or God and Jesus. I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit. We didn't talk about that as much. But I, my mother uh, was a staunch Lutheran, partly uh, that's, Part, I would say that is the main church in Minnesota, possibly because there's many more Swedish people and uh, German folk. Oh, okay. But um, I've always gone to church. Okay. Yeah, I... I, I never... Well, I took a little time off, but very, very little. And um, you grow. You don't understand everything, and then actually as a child or even as you're uh, growing up. But... Um, even when I would, would party and do things, I still went to church. I think that was something that was expected of me. And I just did it. Yeah. So, um, and I'm glad I did because yeah. I have my faith and I, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have that. I just right. would not be a complete life. I Maybe. agree. I agree. Well, that... <clears throat> okay, my dear. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and now, we may have asked this question in a different way a little in the previous video that we did. Okay. But who are your children and what are your favorite memories with your children? I thought you were going to say, which one's <laughs> my favorite? <laughs> Grandma, you're not supposed to have favorite children. But you can't have favorite grandchildren, I'm just saying. <laughs> Would you turn that thing off? <laughs> what's, the, what's the question? <laughs> Would you repeat the question? <laughs> yes. We're okay. so silly together. We're just a mess. Well, that's that. Yeah, you know, I, love I, it I, I want my kids to see this. You know, I think it's fun. We, I grew up having this <clears throat> all the time. So for me, I, I'm enjoying this. So. Who are your children, uh -huh. and what is your favorite memory with your children? 
Oh my gosh. Who are my children? No. The first one is Pam. Do you want to go into detail about any of these kids? You can just go with their names and then yeah. you talk about like maybe a favorite. And then uh, Doug and Dawn and later Jennifer. I would say with my first three, you know, uh, growing up with them, I probably was only 20 years older than them, you know, yeah. or a little older. And I would think, I would say camping trips. Okay. Uh, um, oftentimes I was alone with them because Alan worked and he would take us up there and we'd get the tent up and uh, that was tenting, not just, you know, all the, right. you know. we didn't have uh, all the extras, no TV <laughs> and that's what's good. Oh yeah. You are creating your own enjoyment and uh, pleasures. So uh, that I found to be a fun time with them in the walking around and, uh, you know, jumping into water and play and uh, cooking, you yeah. know, on the little stove and going up to get ice at a, a restaurant store as well with a wagon. And we always took the dog because <laughs> We wanted to be safe. <laughs> I will tell you one story about when I was with Pam and she was probably 18 or 17. <clears throat> we went alone camping and we were at Stony Creek, I believe. And um, we didn't take a tent. We just had blankets. And we put them up on, I don't know if we had a line, and we put a blanket up, and then we slept on the ground. And this particular night, <clears throat> we heard um, something break our, what do you call that thing? Ice chest? Put, ice chest, but it was made of styrofoam. Okay. And we heard it crack, and we looked up, and there was a bear into our food. Oh, goodness. And we didn't have a tent. We're just, you know, <laughs> just there. And here's people walking down. They had heard about the bear uh, in, the, in, the, in the area there. And they had their flashlights. And the bear got scared, but he ate everything out of our, our uh, ice chest. And then he went across a little creek and he was gone. And the people said... He probably is gone now because he's afraid and he's eaten and but we had to lay down the rest. Oh, I know the part I missed. When we saw the bear, Pam pulled up her britches and I had a little slower and I said, like a kid, wait for me. And we ran away from there, but we saw the people coming over oh, the hill okay. with their flashlights. But we had to get through the rest of the night in, in fear <laughs> that he wow. might come back. Well, yeah. But that's... there wasn't any more food for him. That yeah. was probably a good thing. Oh. So we the... went to a different area. After having to go get more food. <laughs> and we had to get more food. But that, I think, was probably the most memorable. Yeah, that, I didn't know. That's... Yeah. Well, that explains a lot why my dad likes camping because we did that a lot as I was growing up and mm -hmm. I still enjoy doing it. My kids are asking, when can we go again? And, and, uh, they really enjoy it. So that's kind of, that's kind of neat that it's passed on from generation to generation. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. And this uh -huh. was mostly up in the Sequoias. Okay. You know, that's, I think our next camping trip, the last couple times we've camped, we've went by the beach, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. Yeah. But I, I want to take them up there, so I'm thinking we're going to try Shaver, go up by Shaver Lake and, oh, okay. and, and camp. So we'll see. Um, let's see. What could you tell me that I... Oh, I'm trying to re read this correctly. What could you tell me that I would be surprised to learn about you? I didn't think of anything. 
I know, it's an interesting question, but, I, you know. Oh, Jamie, I can't think. Beyond the years of uh, you being around? Well, okay. You might have been surprised that somebody came into my life at 79 or whatever I was. That's pretty old to have somebody come to your door and ring the bell. And I knew him because I went to church with him. But see, I, I was single for 24 years. And this man was can't, couldn't stand it four months without <laughs> seeking somebody. <laughs> okay, anyway. And what was so funny about it, he couldn't find my telephone in the directory. And if it was in there, it was the wrong number of the church directory. We went to church together. Okay, so... The doorbell rang. He did find my house. The thing is, he should have known where this house was because he and his wife moved me in here. Oh, wow. About 18 years prior to that, or 17 years. He couldn't remember that. Okay, so his name is Tom, and he, and I had to go get my kids, and we, uh, Doug and Pam, it was their birthday time. It was about this time of the year because uh, I took uh, Pam and Doug to Dachi Palace because I got a freebie for a meal there. Okay. Okay. And I told him I needed to go pick my kids up and he was walked out and he stood there for a while and he said, would you like to go ride up to the lake or would you like to go out to eat sometime he says you know the four walls get pretty you know tight or you, yeah. know, you know and um, he would he would like to have someone you know a, a friend yeah and I stood there and I thought about it and I said I can do that so then he started calling on the telephone and da 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 and you know the rest yeah. I guess I don't know if that surprised you, but um, anyway, it kind of surprised me. But hey. So that's it. I can't, that's the only thing I can think of that you. Well, no, I, that's, I mean, I knew he was around, but I mean, I only <clears throat> was around him maybe a couple of times. Yeah, he was in your home a couple of times. Yeah, because I remember he. he and was... I remember that he must have been a comfortable looking person and not, and kids weren't fearful of him by any means. But little Aaron sat on his lap. Oh. And I said, the kids like him. And they did. They did. He they had did a have... bunch of kids. And <laughs> they, they all liked him. <laughs> Don't know if my kids like me. Oh, they do. Okay, thank you. That's where the end goes. <laughs> well, that I think that's a really cool story. Because love doesn't... There's no <clears throat> age... No, we still have yeah. a heart and we're not yeah. dead. Yeah. I think that's, you know, yeah, I think that's, there's no boundary there. Or not boundary, but and the age need, isn't And boundary. you need friends that yeah. you can tell things to and it won't go any, you know, further and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it was fun while it, yeah. he lived. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what is your dream for your children and grandchildren? My dream. Or if you have like, what would you like them, what would you like to see them do or mm -hmm. what would you like to see for them? Well, you know, I always pray for them that they know Jesus as their Savior and live a life accordingly and have healthy lives and in happiness. So, I mean, that's the main things. Yeah. And that we all get along as family. Yes. I know that's mm -hmm. not going to always be, but at least there's forgiveness. Right. And we accept each other the way we are. No, I think that's... We can't change each other. Right. You know, but I think that that acceptance part is really important and getting along as family. 
um, it, it's really important because some families don't mm -hmm. really get along. I mean, we're going to have differences, but it's accepting those differences and being like, you know, it's okay. Yeah. We have different views, but we can still love each other and still be family, you know, and I think that's, that's important. Okay. All right, here's a good question. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all good questions, but I like this question. Let me say, what were your grandparents like? Oh, I had only one set of grandparents. Uh, my dad's parents had died, I think, when I was three or four. I, I don't remember them. I have pictures of them up there. Oh, okay. Right there, those two right there. All right. And um, I have others here, too, of, of my mother's folks. And that's who I remember because um, mom... Mostly my mother and my sister and I, her name is Renee, uh, and um, we would go see them. It was about 200 miles, and I would always get car sick, but if I could get even 100 miles, I was so happy. <laughs> but anyway, they first they lived uh, on a farm, and that was so great because you see the chickens are laying eggs and, and the cows getting milk and they had big horses that I don't know if grandpa had a tractor but I know he had those big horses that would you know do the farm work oh okay and he had a wonderful big barn this was in the town of Mora Minnesota Mora Minnesota mm -hmm. Okay. And there is a town called that in Sweden as well. Oh, okay. So, uh, that was well, a good memory. Okay. That's pretty neat. I like that. Okay. Okay. What is the earliest memory that you have? Like, what's one of the first things you remember? Hmm. I know that's a tough one because I'm, I'm trying to think right now for myself and I'm like, Ooh. Seems like I just remember things that my mother told me that she did with me as a child. But this is what I don't remember, but I believe her. She would bundle me all up in this cold country that we lived in yeah and we had a porch my mother believed totally <clears throat> that if you were warm enough you can go outside uh -huh. well yes and I was still in a buggy or whatever yeah and she had me all bundled up and she put me out there on the porch I mean for a while you know and get fresh air but uh, I don't remember that. And okay. Let's see what do I, we had uh, an upstairs, and I had a bed, of course, up there. But um, one thing, I fell down those stairs often, it seemed, and uh, Uh, there's another thing I do remember, but that wasn't the first things. We did have a radio, and every Saturday they had these um, kind of programs like Let's Pretend. Uh, they would tell stories about, oh, you know, like uh, fairy tales and stuff like that. And uh, I would always hear those stories. Every Saturday, I remember hearing those. Okay. And, uh, well, one thing I do remember, my folks had their bedroom downstairs because we usually had a roomer, um, you know, a person, a boarder. Oh, okay. Well, it was like and, a roomer. Oh, what's okay. a roomer? Yeah, R-U-M-O? No, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was thinking of like a story, but yeah. you're talking about someone that would board with you. Yes. Okay. And that was, you know, it kept us, I don't know if we made payments in those days for houses. I don't remember any of that stuff. Right. And, but, uh, okay. And sometimes I think they would eat with us and sometimes they didn't. They just lived their own lives 
but they use the our house as their bedroom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's, so that was, you know. Yeah. Those stories. Well, that's pretty neat. I didn't know that. See, me, I'm learning. me out in the cold. Oh, poor grandma out in the cold. <gasps> uh, let's see. Now, here's a question I like. What makes you happy? Oh, what makes me happy? My coffee in the morning. <laughs> I I second that. I had my coffee That's on the way over. That's about the first thing I think about. <laughs> hey, coffee is a beautiful thing, Grandma. I had to have my coffee. I was driving over here and I was like, I was looking forward when I was, I was like, I'm going to wake up. I don't have to go to work today. I'm going to get my coffee. I'm going to go see Grandma. But I was like, coffee. <laughs> Yep, she's that's first over grandma. <laughs> okay. it's all right. it, it, it was first over you too. I didn't even know you were out there. <laughs> but oh. I think getting out of bed is a nice thing, but it's getting a little owlier, you know, to wow. have to creep out of it. But, but uh, I think morning is my. Uh, Don Hill said. You go like a house of fire in the morning, and at the end of the day, you're just dead. <laughs> but you just get that momentum going. Yeah. I have to get this done, and I've got to do this, and I've got to call somebody. And, uh, you know, you do about five things at one time, it seems. And Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I, I'm, it's hard for me to be a morning person, but I think it is good to get up and, and I've always admired that because you're you have never been one to sleep in you're always up and ready to go and you're always chipper you've had your coffee and you're ready to go <laughs> is that what's making me happy is this what the question <laughs> <laughs> and then I sort of like just to sit over there under a blankie and read mm -hmm. that makes me pretty happy I I would I would second that because I growing up I always seen you reading and you always pushed reading um, as when I was younger and I think that that's really important oh, yes I used to buy you comic books if just read yes I was I was read. very stubborn about it but you got me through it Archie yes I by the way I still do you have, have an Archie I still have all of them I never threw them away Oh, I'm so proud of you. My wife's like, what is all that bag of paper? <laughs> what is all this? Get I was like, it out for your kids. Well, kids they're they're poor them. things. They're falling apart. Because some of the ones that you got for me were old. They weren't current ones. You found really? them. Yeah, they were old. They're like from the 70s. But and, I do remember going to Kmart and finding them. Yeah, so I have some that were new. But I remember you also finding me some of the older ones. Mm. Well, we loved going to Goodwill, so I that you. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> Tell about that. You took home a phonograph once, and I think we both got killed because you left it in the living room unattended. <laughs> oh well. Bite our tongue. Oh my gosh. You know what? Anyway. We had a lot of fun. But you know, it didn't hurt anybody. No, it didn't. I mean, there were there were worse things. I still have one of my record players that I've had forever, and then I have a newer one. But you know me, that all the records are your fault. <laughs> it's I, I don't know if I have any records, but I do have the cassettes I have to say I got rid of. CDs I still have, and DVDs. I still have those two. I think I have one cassette, <clears throat> only because I never really liked how cassettes worked, and I still have, for some reason, I can't bear to... Part with them is all the a tracks that we got oh, at Goodwill. Really? I still. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna put it in? I don't An old car that's still. I don't know. You know that was fun. I remember Jennifer and I sing to whoever that was on there. Um, it was old artists, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so I I can't yeah I still have them. I do have an a track player, but it's up in the attic, and. Um, I just you have I'm, an attic, a little bit of one, and yeah. I just I don't have anywhere to put it, and it needs to be fixed, and I, you know, <laughs> one of those things. Okay, have you? Oh well, I kind of know the answer. Have you owned any pets? What was your first pet, and what was your first pet? The one I remember the most was Skippy. Uh, it was a little black cocker spaniel. That was uh, my dad. 
wasn't home a lot, but when he did come, well, I should say, he, he he had he was addicted to something. We don't have to go through all that, right? You know? And he kind of hung where uh, people drink, and uh, but he always thought about us anyway. And this particular time, he came home and he had something in his pocket. But and I was looking at, it and I thought, there's something in there moving. <laughs> and I said, Dad, what's in your pocket? It was a pup. Oh. It wasn't making any noise, but that was Skippy in there. And I have that picture on my Facebook. Okay. Of my sister and I in the snow with this little pup. And, um, and it did get to sleep with us. Oh. My mother never liked animals in the house, but <laughs> she didn't want an animal, period. But, <laughs> We did it. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have an animal if it wasn't for him. So oh. I've got to give him credit. His name is Edgar Johnson. <laughs> We've got to give him credit. <laughs> yeah, so that was our first one, but it had a sad ending. It was poisoned, uh, food poisoning of some type or something. Oh. We're not sure what he got into. Yeah. But yeah. I have to tell one story about Skippy. This was when we first got Skippy peanut butter. And on the radio that I told you about prior, mm -hmm. they would uh, advertise Skippy peanut butter. And that man would go, Skippy, Skippy peanut butter. And that dog's little ears would go doing like <laughs> that because he heard his name. Cute. From the man on the radio. How cute. I know. They, they're smart, those little critters. Yes, they, they really are. are. They're smarter than we give them credit for oh, sometimes. Oh, yeah. It, that was a real delight. That was a nice dog. Oh, well, that's that's something I... I mean, I remember hearing okay. about Skippy, but that this is I, that's all new to me. And, of course, we have the pictures of Tippy, but that was the one that was really loved by my three kids. Yeah. And Tippy had a tragic death, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, what is different about growing up today than when you were a child? Oh, well, today, everything's push button, pretty much instant, and we had to uh, create our own fun, create our own food, and grow our own food, pretty much. We had a store. Right. But um, mom did have a garden and um, she made our clothes and um, made our soup from scratch. All those things were, you know, started with one item and you add to it. Right. And let's see. Oh, we didn't even have a car. My dad was a mechanic. We did not have a car. Partly, we could walk everywhere because it was a, a town of 300 people. That's pretty small. <laughs> Everybody knew each other. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, and Yeah, that, that's what we did. Walk. Ride bike. And you didn't call anybody... You didn't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> you just ran to people's houses and knocked on the door. That's the way it was. I think from my perspective, I feel like when you were growing up, people were a lot more social <clears throat> in face-to-face -face yes. rather than being on oh, the computer that. or the phone or, you know, now we have Facebook and stuff, but, you know, now mm -hmm. there was an email or stuff. There was a lot more face to face. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah. You know, so I think that's that's what I've observed. You know, and I think that's I think that's something that we're missing in today's society. But we won't go on to that. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Well, I got one more question. All right. We've we've done good. I think so. And I think it's a this is a cool question. Uh, what is your favorite thing about being a grandparent? 
I can send you home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not responsible for nighttime. <laughs> Unless you're staying with me for a week or whatever. But uh, I think we're more relaxed uh, in what we do with our grandkids. And we try harder, I'm sure, in some ways. Uh, okay. And we enjoy them more uh, because we're not responsible for all that stuff like your clothes and your what you need to eat and your pills and whatever. Yeah. Have nothing. Well, yeah. Kids but, were on them, but. Uh, but there's a lot less. There's a lot less responsibility. But yet, on the other hand, yes, you do because if something happens to you, like somebody. Cutting their finger. Shifting their Oh, that too. Car. Shifting the car into neutral. And it goes in reverse while you're in the store with two girls in the car. I will not mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. That was, well, okay. it's memorable. That was My memorable. first grandchild was your brother, wasn't it? No, it was Faye. Faith, of course, but she was so far. Okay, yes, Faith was uh, living here her first three years, I think. Mm, okay. And then they moved up to uh, Oregon. But, um, well, let's see, and then I had a daughter, also the same age, and it was kind of like twins again. I had Cynthia and Helen, they were twins. But the grandchild, this is one thing that happened. When Faith was over, she called me Grandma. And I remember the first time she said Grandma. And I was, I don't even know if I was 41 yet. And that child said, Grandma! And I thought, who is she talking to? She was talking to me! <laughs> I, I mean, I knew I was, but I hadn't heard it yet. <laughs> and then Jennifer was young, and she would call me Grandma. And I said, I am not your grand. I am your mother. <laughs> Gosh, that was really a weird situation. <laughs> That's right, Faith. Gosh, she's so far away and she's all grown up now and she has kids 16 and 14. Can you believe I have great grandkids that old? Wow. Yeah. Sebastian is driving. Yep. Ooh. Wow. That's what it in watching them grow and uh, become people, you know. Yeah. And hopefully good people. I still have some around here. <laughs> Do we have to name them? <laughs> yeah. No, they're good kids, but you know, it's a growing up thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would concur. Well, we made it through our questions, and we didn't yeah. get off too topic, but I had a lot of fun. I really did. But your great, your kids are my great grandkids, right? And mm -hmm. I love them. Yes, that's what you do. You love them, and you pray for them yes. a lot, <laughs> and the parents of them. <laughs> yes, because 